Genesis 32. So this is a, another uh, lesson that we're going to discuss. Uh, the last time I already shared uh, another topic on this. Same chapter, Genesis 32, verses 1 to 21. Are you there, Paul? So Genesis 32, verses 1 to 21. Please begin. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of the place Mahanaim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, and to the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my lord Esau. The servant Jacob said thus, I have sojourned with Laban, and stay there until now. I have oxen, and asses, flocks, and men servants, and women servants, and I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him, and the flocks, and the herds, and the camels, and two bands, and said, if Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which says unto me, Return unto thy country, and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies of all the truth which thou hast shewed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two men. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I will him, lest he will come and smite me, and the mother with the children. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good, and make thy seed as the sand of the sea which cannot be numbered for multitude. And he lodged there that same night, and took of that which came to his hand a present for Esau his brother, two hundred she-goats, thirty goats, two hundred ewes, and twenty rams, thirty milch camels with their colts, forty kind, and ten bulls, twenty she-asses, and ten foals. And he delivered them into the hand of his servants, every drove by themselves, and said unto his servants, Pass over before me, and put a space betwixt drove and drove. And he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau my brother meeteth thee, and asketh thee, saying, Whose art thou, and whither goest thou, and whose are these before thee? And then thou shalt say, They be thy servant Jacob's, and it is a present sent unto my lord Esau, and behold, also he is behind us. And so commanded he the second, and the third, and all the followed the droves, saying, On this manner shall ye speak unto Esau when ye find him. And say, Moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me, and afterward I will see his face, but venture he will accept of me. So went the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. Shall we pray? Our Father, thank you once again, Lord, for uh, giving us this uh, privilege to once again study your word. Lord, we're so thankful and blessed uh, since our Sunday school and uh, our worship service for hearing those words that really challenge us. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to work in our midst and give us, Lord, that humble heart and a humble spirit, Lord, to accept and receive your words this afternoon. Please bless me and give me wisdom and knowledge, Lord, to deliver your message to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Paul. Please be seated. So here in the story, we can uh, see how Jacob fled from Esau 
to Laban. Now everybody knows the story of what ha- really happened. You know, what, what I'm trying to emphasize this afternoon is that God has already uh, planned something in our lives. And we cannot help out God in doing this for us. And we also have to understand the Saturday this afternoon that when we ask something to God, we have to obey and follow it. And not to make our own ways or to make any of our devices in order for us to achieve and reach that uh, uh, goal that we wanted to have in our lives. You know what? What happened here is that after 20 years, you know the instruction of his mother, uh, Rebecca, is that uh, she will send the messenger to uh, uh, Jacob later on if okay, the anger of his brother will subside. But after 20 years, no news. He hasn't received any news. So it was really strange on his part. But again, what happened here is that as we study, as we go on in this uh, uh, chapters, let us see the actions of Jacob during the time, uh, during the crisis that he experienced here in his life. Now, conflicts may arise. Okay? Difficulties may arise. But let me tell you this afternoon, our God is great. He knows what he is doing. You know, seldom to some people who will really uh, uh, try their best that no matter what, they will hold on to God. You know, trusting God is the best thing for us to do. Not to do uh, other devices, not to do any uh, scheming, but again, asking God for help is the best thing for us to do. You know, crisis doesn't make a man. But you have to understand that it shows what a man is made of. Yes, number one here that we can see. And Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. And verse 2, and when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. You know, greatly relieved uh, that Laban had left him. Now what happened here is that uh, he was, uh, of course, uh, I-, I would say, uh, relieved when his uh, father-in-law uh, chased after him before he arrived here in uh, this place. You know, he was greatly relieved that Laban left him and Mizpah, now here in verse 32, stood between them. But again, Jacob here is now heading towards Bethel, which is the house of God. And also the destination that God had appointed him to go. Now let us read Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Now, this uh, verse 3, this is what happened here. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. So, it was the plan of God. It was the instruction of God. Amen? Now, also in verse 13 of the same chapter, it tells us that I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me, now arise. Get thee out from this land and return unto the land of thy kindred. But you know what? Jacob knew here that he had to meet Esau along the way. Why? Because in traveling to Bethel, he would come near unto the place called Mount Seir, which is also the place where Esau lived. Now, in uh, chapter 43, verse 16, let us... Uh, Take a look there. Chapter 33, verse 16. And Esau returned that day unto his way unto Zir. You know what? He was really scared of his brother. You know the feeling, amen? Now, we know the, we know the story. Okay? How he deceived his brother and how he deceived his father at the same time. 
You know, if you only follow the uh, plan and the, uh, the purpose of God in this life, I believe this would not happen anymore. But again, he's about to help God to fast track or to get the blessing okay, right away. Now, I remember what Pastor Ash also shared this message before, that there's no shortcut in blessing. Right? No shortcut in blessing. You know what? In Proverbs 18 verse 19, the Bible tells us, A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Now, anticipating a difficult reunion with Esau here, Jacob here, let us go back to our text, took a decision. He took here a decision and sent messengers ahead. Now, let us try verse And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, and to the land of Seir, the country of Edom. You know what? What happened here is that, if you could remember here in verse 31, that when Laban approached Jacob, okay, J- Jacob has a, uh, a, con- uh, has a, had a had a confidence because he, know, he knew that he was in the right place. Amen? But when he's about to approach and meet Esau, he know was in, he was in the wrong place. You know, as we continue here, he sent his messengers and had to inform his brother that he was coming. But again, instead of committing everything into the hands of the Lord, who had protected him from Laban, here we go again, Jacob made his own decision. That was not befitting to the man God had chosen to carry out his promise. You know, sending the messengers was a really good idea. No? Now, we've heard that about John uh, shared to us in the book of Joshua. Sending the spies into the, uh, to Jericho. That was really a good idea. There's nothing wrong, wrong with that. But what happened here in this uh, verse, in this chapter, is that, but calling Esau, my Lord, and calling himself a servant, okay, and trying to impress Esau with his wealth, was the only evidence that Jacob wasn't trusting God to, what, care for him. You know, if you will go to the New Testament, the Bible tells us, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. You know, one of the reasons why it, the Israelites were not, a, some of the Israelites were not able to reach the promised land, it is because of their unbelief. Amen? Amen. It's because of also their disobedience. Now, it is also very important to us to realize that our plans must be in accordance to the will of God. You know, trusting God. Uh, what's the song that Brother Cedric is always uh, leading us in the morning? <laughs> Make exercise. <laughs> Trusting me. What's that? Can you help me out? Trusting Jesus. Okay, thank you so much. There's a song, Trusting Jesus. Why? The only thing that we can do, especially in, during these times, is to trust God and give everything into his hands. Now, as we continue here, here in verse 4, and he commanded them saying, Thou shall you speak unto my Lord. So there is an arrangement that took place here. Uh, Thou shall you speak unto my Lord Esau. Thy servant Jacob said, Thus I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have oxen and asses and flocks and men servants on and so forth. Now, Jacob is telling here that, well, my brother, I don't need anything anymore. I'm a wealthy man right now. Well, on, on, on that area, on that part, it's also correct. But again, as we go back here in our text in verse 2, and when Jacob saw, uh, in verse 1, and Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. You know? We have to understand that 
because of God's grace, because of His mercy, again, there's a security and protection that God provided for him. You know what? Imagine Jacob's surprise when he saw the army of, an, of angels before him. Before arriving to the place of uh, Laban, when he arrived in that place, he saw the angels what? Ascending and descending on the uh, ladder that reached to heaven. You know, we have to understand here that this is God's host. Amen? And he exclaimed and he called this place in verse 2, Mahanaim. Which means what? Two camps here. Jacob's camp and God's camp at the same time. Amen? So it means that he was not alone. He was not alone when he was there. When he was there together, when they were there together with his family. But again, 20 years before, you have to understand that, as what I've said a while ago, Jacob had seen the angels at Bethel and learned that God was with him. Hey, God is with us. Amen. He's with us. Now, we can see that in uh, Genesis 28, verses 10 to 12. Let's go there, please. Genesis 28, 10 to 12. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran, or Haran. And he lighted up upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took all the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. But now here, he discovered that God's angelic troops were there to protect him and to fight for him. That's why there's no reason for him to be afraid. Amen? Now let's go to Romans 8, 31. If God be for us, who can be against us? Now if you're going to study in geology, actually others says in geology, others says in geology. I don't know for other Bible colleges. But it's in geology, right? Angelology. Angelology or angelology. <laughs> so again, in uh, secular uh, stores, there are some displays uh, for you to study about angels. And actually, according to them, uh, you can uh, call out angels and uh, ask their help. But actually, that's so weird because uh, we know that these are evil spirits, actually. We have to understand that only God can control these angels. Although there are ministering spirits actually that minister to God's people, let us take a look in uh, Psalms or Psalm 34 verse 7, please. Psalm 34 verse 7. The Bible tells us the angel of the Lord encompasseth round about them that fear him and deliver what? Them. Now there are a lot of, uh, uh, there are some accounts in the, in the Bible that uh, really we can uh, appreciate the goodness of God. Especially during the time of uh, Elisha, when uh, they were surrounded by the Syrian armies. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong. That uh, Eli Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes. He's talking about his servants. So when God opened the eyes of uh, the servant Elisha, he saw what? Yeah, they were surrounded, uh, those uh, Syrians were, uh, they were actually surrounded by uh, chariots and angels. So that's the protection of God. Amen. Amen. Actually, it's very simple that we have to really understand this. Minsan lang napapatay ang ilaw, natatakot natin, biglang sumisigaw ka na. Naakala mo ay ano na nangyari. No? God is with us. Amen. Another thing that we can see, let's go back to our text here. Okay. Now in verse verses uh, 6 here. Verse 6. 
And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee and four hundred men with him. Okay? So upon hearing this, of course, he was surprised. Oh, so my brother is now, is now coming to kill me uh, together with my family. So, again, as Jacob and his family, his servants and flocks, again, a flocks here, I mean, and the herds travel slowly towards Bethel here. Also, the messengers here were moving rapidly, going to Mount Seir. And then, actually, they were able to return uh, right away and reach in the Jabbok here, where uh, Jacob and his family uh, stayed. So, they returned with a threatening message. Hey, your brother is coming together with 400 men. So, of course, he was expecting the worst. Jacob this time now jumped into what? The conclusion that his brother came, is about to come to destroy him together with his family. That's why it's very, impor it's very important that we have to understand without, again, what happened here is that without having, without having a, a uh, I would say, a proof, he already jumped into the conclusion. Now, jumping uh, right away into the conclusion is also dangerous. Right? No? Having a negative uh, mind. No? Para bang like, may meeting. Uh, Nag-uusap sila kasi para sa anniversary. Tapos biglang dumaan ka. Biglang ka tumigil. Sinong baboy? Nagalit ka bigla. Di mo, naman, di mo naman alam na pinag-uusapan pa nila. Bibili na isang kilong baboy para sa anniversary. Nagalit ka na, akala mo, sinabihan kang baboy. Di ba? So, jumping into conclusion. Now, we have to understand okay, that when faith is crowded out by fear, we're prone to start scheming and trusting in our own resources. That's the problem sometimes. No? No. There was a story here. Uh, a lady approached to uh, D. Al Moody. Uh, D. Al Moody is really popular, actually. Everybody knows that. He's, she said, I found a wonderful verse that, uh, to help me overcome fear. And she actually quoted Psalm 53, verse 6. It says there, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. But again, Dil uh, Moody uh, answered and said, I can give you a better promise. And Dil Moody gave the verse Isaiah 12 too. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. You know what? Believers who are walking by faith need not fear the enemy or whatever bad news may come their way. You have to trust. Now God is right. We've proven that. How many months right now? You know, since, since the pandemic. And by the grace of God, we survived. Amen. Amen. That's the goodness of God. And then you have the uh, the gods to say, Pinabayaan ako ng Diyos. Tindi mo naman. No. That's why Psalms 112 verse 7. Psalms 112 verse 7. The Bible tells us here. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. But again, sad thing here. The sad thing here is that in verse 7, then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. No? And therefore, what happened here? He reverted to his old policy of scheming. Why? Because he's really good in that. In that, amen? When it comes to uh, making uh, uh, things for the sake of his own, he's good in that? No? Para bang nagbibigay, may bibigay ka lang. Para sa iyo to. May plano ka na palang kalukuhan. 
scheming. Di ba? Nakakalungkot. And that's really, really sad. You know, instead of remembering the encouraging visions of God's angelic uh, forces that he met in um, uh, Manaim, uh, again, Jacob divided his camp into two bands. Again, in dividing this group, now, the purpose is that if the other uh, group will be attacked, the other group will survive. You know, we have to understand that it was a very poor strategy. Imagine 400 men together with his brother Ezo. Again, he, bet, he better stick to the original plan. With the two bands, angelic host and together with his family. You know, sometimes we really cannot think well. We really cannot think properly if we are in fear. Amen? We cannot think well. That's why the Bible is always reminding us, what? Do not fear. Because I have given you what? The spirit of power, not the spirit of fear. It's very important to do these things. And verses 9 to 12, now we can see here, then, And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said unto me, Return unto thy country, into the kindred, and I will deal well with thee. Here comes now his prayer. This is one of the greatest prayer ever recorded here in the word of God. And yet it was prayed by a man whose faith was very weak. So when you pray, give it all to God. No more questions and no doubts. Because it's useless when after you pray, you will still doubt that God will answer your, uh, God will answer your prayer or not. Then it's useless. Now, he was like the father of a demonized child who cried out in Mark 9.24. No? Oh. And it, says, and it says here, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. That's why every statement in this prayer indicates that Jacob had a profound knowledge of God's ways and God's character. And yet he was praying in desperation and not in confidence. Now, Take note that here, those things that he presented to God. Now, here in verse 9. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac. You know what? If he really had that confidence to God, he would not address it to his forefathers. Why not addressing it this way? The God, my, I would say, my God, my Lord, instead of saying, God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac. Now actually there's another explanation of that, but we're not going to go there anymore. But we have to understand that it is because of God's covenant. God in His grace had called Abraham and made a covenant with him in uh, Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3. Let us go there please. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. That's the covenant of God to them. And again, in that covenant was a firm here. If we're going to read the, the whole book, it was a firm to well, both Isaac and to Jacob. That it was on the basis of that covenant that Jacob asked God for help. For the help he desperately needed. 
That's why God's people approach the throne of grace, of grace through Jesus Christ on the basis now of the new covenant that he made through his own blood. In Hebrews chapter 8, 6 to 13, and we have discussed about that with brother Jeremiah. Again, because of God's covenant. Another thing, here in verse 9. And the Lord which said this unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. But again, Jacob, was certainly, uh, Jacob certainly was happy to get out from the hands of Laban. Laban's control. But we have to understand that it was God's idea that he leave, that he left Padanaram and returned to his own land here in chapter 31, verse 13. You know what? Jacob can simply uh, make a uh, simple uh, goodbye, well, goodbye, goodbye to his father-in-law. But instead, <laughs> he was rushing. So this is what happened. You know, Jacob forgot, I'm always telling this, that God's commandment always involves God's enablement. For the will of God will never lead us where the power of God can protect us and provide for us. But again, Jacob's imagination ran ahead of his theology and he was sure that Esau is about to destroy him. Now in verse 10, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast shewed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan and now I am become to man. We can also see here the care of God for them. The, con the concern of God. Because as Jacob reviewed the past 20 years, he reminded God of the wonderful way that he cared, how God cared for him. Imagine when he arrived at the, uh, uh, the place of uh, Laban, God's hand was with him. Amen? God had been faithful and kind to care for him. Well, when he arrived in the, at the place of Laban, he only owned a staff. But when, when he left uh, in, in the house of Laban, he has now the wealth. The blessing that God gave to him. So why would God care for him for 20 years? And then now, Esau will just destroy him or murder him or murder him. In verse 11, Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and smite me and the mother with the children. Of course, this is not easy. Jumping into the conclusion that those 400 men will really destroy and kill them. But take note that God has a purpose in everything. God has a purpose. Jacob was not thinking only of himself, but he, has, he had his family and God's great plan in mind as well. Take note that uh, Jacob's uh, fam sons would multiply and become what the nation of Israel Amen? And through Israel, God would bring what a blessing to all humankind. And then the Savior, what? The Savior will come from the tribe of Judah and to die for the sins of the world. Amen? Not only that, Paul would also come from the tribe of Benjamin and carry out the gospel to the Gentiles. Another thing in verse 12. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good, and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. And that is the promise of God. What happened was that God, uh, Jacob reminded the Lord of the promises he had made to him in Bethel. Especially that he would do him good and multiply his descendants. God told Jacob, uh, uh, Jacob that he would be with him and bring him back. To Bethel. You know what? That is the blessing. 
Because we as His children will always be guided by the Lord and He will always bring us and He will always put us into the right place for us to grow spiritually. You know what? Circumstances or any difficulties that we encounter are not the reasons for us. Uh, these are not the reasons for us to stop. And to just uh, uh, remain on the uh, on the side, as if we are what we as if we don't have the hope. Why? Because all of these things are uh, part of our life. These are part of our life. That's why, if your basis is that when the uh, it will be the will of God, if everything will be smooth, no, that's tragic. I believe. I was listening to Brother John a while ago. That's right. That's right, actually. Hindi dahil sa smooth lahat ay will na na Panginoon yan. Remember what happened to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ when they were traveling in the Sea of Galilee, right? During that storm. Remember that these are, um, disciples were in the will of God, yet they experienced storms in life. And that's a very clear Evidence here in the Word of God. Amen. Now, God has a purpose for each every one of us. That again, God has a promise as well. Again, this purpose in and through Him. If God allowed Jake Ezo and is meant to kill Jacob and his family. So what will happen? None of these promises now will be fulfilled. Now if I'm not mistaken, the promises that uh, was written, all the promises that was written here in the Word of God, there is about 3,573. If I'm not mistaken, I am wrong. Please correct me. But again, God fulfilled His promise. Well, we don't want to imitate Jacob's fear, unbelief here, scheming, and point us to jump to conclusions here. We would do well to pray the way he prayed. That's why prayer is really, really important for us to, uh, to depend on God, to trust God, to, that He will do something in our lives. That's the yeah, essence, that's the importance of prayer that we're doing every Saturday. Not only every Saturday, but every day of our lives. We need to pray to God. I remember, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is it John Knox? Pastor, if I'm not mistaken, the, when he prayed uh, the blood, of yeah, the armies of England, and even blood and Mary trembled. Wow. That is prayer. Oh. I like that. And here in verses 13 to 21, and he lodged there that night, and took of that which came to his hand a present for years of his brother. So, so on and so forth here. He thought that, of course, by giving gifts, he can appease the anger of his brother. It looks like uh, right now in the present, like, uh, how, 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 can I, how can I say this? <laughs> Something like a peace offering <laughs> to appease the anger of, of someone or somebody. But again, he did this before. Okay? By taking the birthright of his brother. Now, as we continue here, you would think that a prayer with that kind of solid. Uh, Theological content would have brought God's peace to Jacob's heart, but again, it didn't. Really sad. And in his relentless, he decided to act here by his own. You know, there's a problem sometimes when we pray. <laughs> We're praying something to God and then we still act on our own. Oh. It's always happening most of the time. And we cannot deny that. And verse 20, let's go there, please. Uh, 18. Uh, uh, yeah, 20. 
And say ye moreover, Behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me. And afterward, I will see his face for adventure. He will accept of me. So what happened here? He put some expensive gifts. Now according to Sir Robert Warp, Wal Walpole, uh, the first uh, Prime Minister of England, he said, all men have their price. All men have their price. Many people of the world follow that philosophy. Every man has his price. But again, the philosophy uh, Jacob was following as he put together his gifts of 580 valuable animals. Again, he divided them into separate bands or herds and commanded the herdsmen to what? To keep a space between each herd so that Esau couldn't help but be impressed with his brother's generosity. But again, even more. Was the instruction? They will say the same thing, the same speech to Esau. They belong to your servant Esau. They are gifts sent to my Lord Esau in verse 18. So, of course, with those words, servant, your servant and my Lord. But again, he is ignoring the fact that God made him what? To be the what? Lord or to be the leader over his relatives and even Jacob, or even Esau. In chapter 27, verse 29. Let's go there, please. We're almost done. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. Yeah, nga po mapasok dito yung to the Jew first. Eh. Ewan ko ba? So Jacob discreetly planned to follow behind this last drove, hoping here that the combined impact of the gift would prepare Esau to give, or to forgive him and welcome him when they finally met. But again, if he really trusted the Lord, he should be ahead, not the tail. Amen? <laughs> try, try to figure out. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to say that this is a technique that he did. But again, We've already learned that faith is living without scheming. Amen? But again, before we criticize um, Jacob again, we have to examine ourselves as well. Our own hearts to see if we've ever been guilty of praying and then depending on our own schemes, ideas, and resources right away or at the same time. You have to be very careful. It is true that faith without works is dead. James 2.20 But Jacob's gift wasn't a work of faith because God didn't command it actually. God didn't command it. True faith is based on God's word. Amen. And whatever we do that isn't motivated by faith is sin. No matter how successful it may appear. Again, brothers and sisters, brethren, I hope that when we pray, we have to really commit everything into the hands of God. Not after we pray, that we will still do our own way that is not in accordance to his will. Trust him and he know what he is doing. Amen. He knows what he is doing. You know what? If you're going to really focus here, if you continue to read from 20 to 32, okay, 
Israel was not the problem here. Amen. In this text. I'm going to read here carefully. The problem is Jacob himself. And then later on in his study, if we are going to continue to read that, God will take that something, that selfishness, that uh, uh, self-confidence uh, that is in the life of Jacob. And God wanted to change that, to change his life at that moment. Hey. We have to understand that everything that is do, that we can see right now is made by God. God already prepared us for us. We have to trust Him for that. You know, being here in the church right now is really such a blessing. Listening to His word is really a blessing. Meditating the word of God is really a blessing. That is our God. Again, I'm also saying this many, many times. Okay. But the reason only Timuna Naman. Again, I will say this once again. Be faithful until the end. Be faithful to our God. Pastor.